This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are now just 13 days away from the start of the 2024 NFL season. That feels wild to say, but it means we got just a little bit of time left to lock in some futures bets over at FanDuel Sportsbook for this year. So, Got to get a last look at the board by talking to Raheem Palmer of The Ringer today, getting his read on the top futures of FanDuel Sportsbook and more as we get set for the kickoff of the season. This is Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Raheem Palmer. You can find him on Twitter I, uh, at I am Rostradamus. You can find him on The Ringer Gambling Show, East Coast Bias, and of course, Sunday mornings, Ringer Wise Guys over on FanDuel TV. Raheem it sounds like a busy fall for you. How are you doing today? Yeah, very busy fall. I'm always excited about the NFL season. I can't complain. I'm just so excited. It's about that time where things get busier. So it's a great time. And there is no better way to spend a Sunday morning than catching up with all of you on Ringer Wise Guys. Uh, a lot of very entertaining minds all in one place every Sunday morning on FanDuel TV. Last year, I believe, it was the first year you did that show, at least on FanDuel TV. But it uh, sounds like it's, it was a lot of fun there. It was a lot of fun to watch. And I'm excited to see year two underway, too. I'm very excited. Along with being on FanDuel TV, we're also going to be on YouTube TV as oh. well. So um, big things coming from Ring of Wise Guys. Hopefully we can continue to give you guys winners and just have a lot of fun doing it. I love it. I love to hear that. I'm excited to see you all at the start of the year. Today, we're going to talk to Raheem about preseason takeaways, if there are any, some overreactions to the preseason. Talk about Raheem's overall future betting process, and then his favorite futures over at FanDuel Sportsbook entering this year. We'll go through all that here in just one second, but first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Week Zero College Football Best Bets is up from Tuesday, talking to Austin Swaim about the Week Zero slate, and also broke down the Coke Zero Sugar 400 in Daytona, some bets that I like for that on Saturday night. Those are up on the Covering the Spread podcast podcast feed, FanDuel TV Plus, and the FanDuel YouTube page as well. Football is back, and there's no better place to get in on the NFL action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now all customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. Plus, with FanDuel, you don't even have to leave the app to access real-time stats and data to help make you win even more bets. Download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, must be 18 plus in present in DC or 21 plus in present in select states. Offer ends 922.24. After a three week free trial, the full price of NFL Sunday ticket will be automatically charged to your account. Cancel any time, no refunds, terms and embargoes apply, YouTube TV base plan, required to watch YouTube TV, redemption requires a Google account and current form of payment, gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG, call 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. MD Gambling Help at Oregon, Maryland. Hope is here. Visit Gambling Helpline MA.org or call 800 327 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 8 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Now, Raheem, because this is the first time we've had you on the show, got to pick your brain about your process. Kind of want to hear what you go through before you place an NFL bet, specifically for the futures market. So, how would you categorize yourself as an NFL better? So, I didn't know you were going to ask me about the future specifically, but as far as like categorizing myself, as let's a, make you know, it broad. Then you as an okay. NFL better, you know, what does your process look like? Okay. For me, I think, you know, the biggest thing is that you're trying to identify value. So that's the biggest thing. Where's the value? So yeah. um, I have a number of different ways that I do that. So first things first, I do have a math model, which, you know, has various factors. I use it to spit out a number. And when it spits out a number, you know, typically people with math models, the, the difference between their model and the market number, that's, you know, that's how they determine a bet. Yeah. And that's the more that they bet. But then it's a baseline for me. 
because yeah. I'm looking at other factors. So, you know, let's look at situational handicapping, the spot. Who did a team play last? Is a game, is there a game that they're looking ahead to? Is this a letdown spot? Is it a divisional opponent? We all know divisional opponents play things tougher. Is there a rest advantage? You you look at teams coming off of Thursday night football. They have 10 days off. That helps. Home teams hosting Thursday night football, that's probably worth a half a point to the spread. You know, a home team coming off a Monday night football game and is on the road, that's probably worth, one point to the spread to the opposing teams. You look at back-to-back road games on Monday night and Sunday night afternoon, teams are 44% against the spread in that spot. That's about 1.6 points to the spread. So those situational angles are huge. You also look at the fact that teams coming off a bye, they get a bump in their power rating. West Coast teams playing East. East Coast playing teams going West. You know, let's look at the ultimate situational spot. The loser of the Super Bowl. The yeah. loser of the Super Bowl is just four and twenty against the spread week one since two thousand. That's worth a point to the point spread for the opposing teams. Then you take things like weather, temperature difference, dome teams playing outside. We know Jared Goff he struggles outside of the dome. You look at the Detroit Lions this year; they're a team who I like on the futures. They play almost all of their games in yeah. the dome this year, so that's a huge advantage. And then, obviously, there's market factors. Who's betting what? Is this a public underdog? Is there sharp money on the side of the total? You want to look at things like that. And then, finally, there's injuries. That's, I mean, that's absolutely huge. But, you know, another thing is the value of key numbers. We all know in the NFL, key numbers, three, six, and seven. A three-point favorite wins by three about 8% of the time. Meanwhile, you look at all NFL games, they land on three about 15% of the time. So you want to make sure you're on the right side of the key number. You look at a seven-point favorite, they should win by seven, six percent of the time. A six-point favorite should win by six, five percent of the time. So let's just say you like, you know, the spread is six and a half. If you like the favorite, you need to be laying that six and a half. If you like the dog, you need to be laying, you need to be getting that up to seven and you know, finding a way to either get a seven or a cheat by the seven so that you're not paying, you know more than the price. So there's just various factors. I, I tried to hit on as many as possible, as quick as possible. So it sounds like for me, the way you start is your number. And then it's like, okay, I would consider this bet. And then you go through the thought process you just laid out of like, okay, my numbers like this bet. Do I like this bet? Is that kind of the way that it goes for you? That's exactly the way it okay. is. So the, my number is just a baseline. And yeah. it helps me to recognize, all right, you know what? This is on the right, right, the right page, or yeah. it's not on the right page. But then I also have to go through all of these other angles to make sure that number is actually correct or it's off. So it, I yeah. put all that together and then I have a bet. It's kind of like you go through the process of I assume I'm not going to make this bet and I have to prove myself wrong. Basically, mm-hmm. I want to I want to prove myself that, no, this actually is a good bet. That's the way it kind of sounds here. Exactly. Yeah, I like that. I think that's a good way to mm-hmm. bet in general because we should always kind of be, you know, making mm-hmm. sure we're not making bad bets. No bet is better than a bad bet. Uh, so I think that's a, a good thought process in general when it comes to betting. Let's talk some preseason. We've had at least two games for every single team so far, and the preseason does wrap up this weekend. And we can ignore a lot of stuff in the preseason, but has there been anything actionable you've noticed in the preseason so far, whether it be player or team level that you want to keep in that checklist in your mind when it comes to week one or the futures market? Definitely. Anthony Richardson. I'm I'm not high on this guy at all. He's not very accurate. The way I see it is that with Anthony Richardson, in order for this team to win games, you're not going to be able to pass the ball 30 times a game. This is a team that's going to run the ball and, you know, they're going to try to, you know, Shane Steichen is, you know, very good head coach. He was the offensive coordinator for the Eagles the year they went to the Super Bowl. You saw the Eagles fall off without him. Looked like the Colts were, you know, pretty successful last season, you know, even in the absence of Anthony Richardson. But this guy's not accurate at all. Um, you saw it last night. He's 8 for 14 for 86 yards. You know, throughout the, the, the preseason before that, he was 10 for 18, 55% completion percentage. I'm looking to fade this Colts team. You know, a lot of people were excited about this Colts team. I'm personally not. I think you can go Michael Pittman under 87 and a half receptions. I also think you can go Texas Jets top two in the division plus 150. Um, that's out there in certain sports books. Um, you can check that out. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if FanDuel has it up yet. I'm pretty sure they will have it up at some point. But I yeah. think those are, you know, actionable things that you can take because I, I look at the Texans and the Jags as being 
the top two teams in the AFC South. And I'm not high on this Colts team at all. I'm not sure if I'm willing to go under eight and a half, but I'm looking to, you know, fade them in other ways. That's reassuring to me because I like the Jags this year to win this division, plus 270 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I've always had this fear, like CJ Stroud is a known fear. I should fear CJ Stroud. I I think that's a legitimate fear in my mind, but I've, mm-hmm. I've had kind of this like, Am I overlooking the Colts and am I being too low on them in evaluating the Jags? Because I kind of want to buy low on Trevor Lawrence. And I mean, he, when he was seventh in MVP voting in 2022, he didn't have Calvin Ridley that year. Like he's done well with a poor receiving core in the past. So I wanted that the Jags and the Colts were kind of the one hang up that I had. So it's reassuring to me that you're also a bit lower on them to lower my fear around that Jags divisional bet. Yeah, and then I also I think people don't realize the Colts didn't have a good defense last year. They were 19th yeah. in EPA per play, 16th in passing EPA per play, 20th against the run in EPA per play. So if Anthony Richardson is not going to be this accurate quarterback and he's still rough around the edges, yeah, I don't know what kind of noise this team makes. And I know Shane yeah. Steichen, you know, he's a very good head coach, but at some point your quarterback has to be able to throw the ball. And yeah. There's only so much RPO. There's only so much running you can get away with. And I look at that division, and I think people are kind of sleeping on it. You know, I look at the Houston Texans. They're a team that looks like a Super Bowl contender. We all know about how rookie quarterbacks, excuse me, quarterbacks on a rookie deal is a huge inefficiency because it allows you to, you know, spend money elsewhere. And the Texans did just that. So they're going to be a contender this year. And then I, I look at the Jaguars as a team who should have a resurgent season. You know, before everybody got hurt last year, they were on their way towards a, a, a playoff run. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not high on this Colts team at all. And I, I, they'll be a fun team to watch this year because Richardson is a lot more fun to watch than Gardner Minshew, but fun doesn't always translate to wins, unfortunately. So they'll be fun, but not necessarily a team we want to bet on right away. What about overreactions? Because we can have our proper reactions, proper takeaways. Have you noticed any overreactions based on what we've seen so far in the preseason? I would have to say Bo Nix. Okay. I mean, you look at Bo Nix, the way he's playing right now, I think, you know, we came into preseason saying that, you know, this Denver Broncos team would probably be one of the worst teams in the league. And in Bo Nix, he plays so well that I see a, a number of people reversing course on that. And I'm not sure if I'm ready to do that yet. Yeah, and it's been a lot of positivity around Bo Nix. Their, their win total is still low at five and a half wins over his minus 128. But it is kind of tough to to kill your prior on a quarterback before you see him in an actual regular season game. So did you have opinions on Bo Nix coming out of college? Where are you on him in the draft? Well, I'm not really the biggest college football guy. Yeah. Like, I, I watch a little bit here and there. I'm mostly, you know, the pro sports. Yeah. But he was a guy who... It's not like he was a guy who's throwing the ball down the field. His air exactly. yards weren't, yeah. you know, <laughs> weren't amongst the top quarterbacks you see coming out. And then also he was an older quarterback. And you look yeah. at older quarterbacks coming into the draft, you look at guys like, what, Chris Winky or... Carson Wentz <laughs> was pretty old coming out. I don't want to open old wounds for you. Sorry. Uh, but Carson I'm, I'm actually, pretty old. I'm a Cowboys fan. So okay, okay, that is, that, that is not a wound at all. Um, yeah. Dak but, was I mean, pretty young coming out. So that actually does that actually does back that up. Yeah, so a lot of times you see some of these older quarterbacks, and it's just um, I, I don't know if they necessarily have the upside, you know. Yeah. So I mean, this guy played what six years in college, yeah. so um, I, I'm just I, I need to actually see it. But I mean, he does have some running ability. I think you know a lot of times those mobile quarterbacks they have a higher floor, which is why yeah. everybody loves Anthony Richardson, despite right. the fact that he can't throw. <laughs> right. And, and Nick's was a runner in college, like you said, did have that low A dot too, which is part of why I was concerned about him. And the age mm-hmm. was kind of the big thing as well. So I, I agree with you. Some skepticism there is still warranted, especially given mm-hmm. after Cortland Sutton, not a lot working there in the receiver core, unless Tim Patrick is magically able to stay healthy for this year. Now we can learn about some preseason, uh, some player usage during the preseason and kind of see, okay, what's the team's plan for this player this year? But just in general, I want to pick your brain, Raheem. Any player level markets you want to target from awards, league leaders, whatever it may be entering this year? Okay, so I have three. Okay. I have Derrick Henry over 10 and a half touchdowns. I think that's plus 105 on FanDuel Sportsbook right now. You look at the, the Ravens, they were eighth in red zone conversion rate last year. But if you go back to that game, Ravens beat the Titans 24 16 in London. Lamar Jackson threw one touchdown pass, and they kicked six field goals. (laughs) 
big part of that was their red zone struggles with the run. And, you know, they were just 15th in EPA per play on red zone runs. I think Derrick Henry should change that. Also should stop, you know, Lamar Jackson from taking a little bit of a beat. And we know he's been injury prone. So I think he goes over 10 and a half touchdowns. Next, we're also going to go with Jalen Hurts to win MVP plus 1,400. Okay. You look at the Eagles. They play the 25th ranked schedule of opposing pass defenses, 29th ranked schedule of opposing run defenses. Eagles replaced Brian Johnson with Kellen Moore. I look at this Eagles team as being one of the best teams in the NFC, if not the best team in the NFL. They're favored in 14 of their 17 games this year. So I think that's huge. And, you know, when it comes to winning the MVP, you got to win 12, 13, 14 games. The NFC is pretty seen. It's seen as pretty weak. So I think Jalen Hurts with the new offensive coordinator, bring in Saquon Barkley. You bring in Jahan Dotson, who they just traded for yesterday. Um, I think he has a really good shot at winning MVP. I also like the Eagles, you know, have a real good chance of winning the Super Bowl. I am a Cowboys fan, so this is not me being biased because I'm from Philadelphia. Um, (laughs) Next, we're going to go with Dalton Kincaid over five and a half touchdowns for the season. You lose Stephon Diggs. Somebody's got to step up. I think you're going to see a lot of those two tight end looks. Um, Khalil Shakir is supposed to step up, but um, we know we can trust Dalton Kincaid, especially in that red zone. So let's go over five and a half touchdowns. This was four and a half, but um, got steamed up to five and a half. I still like it there. Did you play a role in steaming this number up, Raheem? Do we have to blame you for the worst number on Kincaid's touchdown prop? <laughs> Uh, I don't want to take credit for it. I mean, I think <laughs> okay. there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of, a lot of sharp people on this. So those again were Dalton Kincaid over five and a half receiving touchdowns, minus 102. Jalen Hurts MVP, 14 to one. Derrick Henry over 10 and a half rushing touchdowns, minus 126. Did want to go back to the Hurts one quickly. Talked about Kellen Moore. And as a Cowboys fan, I feel like I've heard a lot of differing opinions on Kellen Moore, specifically from Cowboys fans. What's your opinion of him, and how do you think he fits in with the very strong personnel the Eagles have on this offense right now? I think he's I think he's being underrated, and I think yeah. he's – I mean, you saw what Brian Johnson did last year. They really struggled. I think they're going to play faster. You know, I think this Eagles team, they started off 10-1 and last year, and then, you know, things went sour. I think he's going to, you know, really improve that Eagles team. So I'm excited for what they do. It'll be fun to see how Jahan Dotson fits into that team because they were trying him out in the slot in Washington. Obviously, that didn't work, but the Eagles have been looking for a third receiver ever since they got A.J. Brown, and they were, they've were they been trying via the draft. They've been trying to lock down that spot, and Dotson had his flaws, but he was a, a really talented guy coming out. He had a pretty decent rookie year, a lot of touchdowns for him, so I think it is a legitimate addition to that team. Uh, in-division trades are always very fun to watch. Okay, what about team level futures? What are you seeing that stands out there, Raheem? Baltimore Ravens under 11 and a half wins. Really like this one. You look at the Baltimore Ravens. They had a, a dream season last year. I don't think it's going to go anywhere near that this year. You look at a lot of guys they lost. They lost almost 6,000 combined snaps. I, I just see this as a team. They're going to take a step back this year. Like, I I mean, they were absolutely dominant last year. I mean, you're talking about a team with 13 wins, largest point differential. First and against the spread margin in the NFL. And this year, they faced one of the toughest schedules in the NFL. They got to play KC, Dallas, Buffalo, Cincinnati in the first five weeks alone. <laughs> I mean, you saw a, a bunch of guys. I mean, the attrition that they lost, you know, you know, Kevin Z- um, Zeitler, yeah. John Simpson, Morgan Moses. I mean, J- Jadavion Clowney. They lost so many pieces that. I just don't know how you recover from this. And then they only replaced him with Derrick Henry. And this is, a, you know, Derrick Henry in his, I mean, who's 30. So I, I think I like I gave out that prop earlier, but right. I don't think that, you know, helps to recover all the pieces that they lost. So I'm going under 11 and a half wins for this Baltimore Ravens team. You know, that's also correlated with something I like. I like the Cincinnati Bengals to win the division. And, okay. you know, you look at the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals, they play a fourth-place schedule. Their extra games are the Titans, Panthers, and Patriots. The Ravens' extra games are the Bills, the Texans, and the Buccaneers. So that changes things. So I really like the Bengals to win the division. I'm going under on the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going over on the Detroit Lions. Ten and a half wins. I think that gets there. Um, I also like the Patriots under adjusted win total. Under five and a half wins. I think that's minus 200 now. 
I like this was initially five and a half on a regular regular yeah. um but you know this got steamed down to about four and a half i don't want to play it at four and a half yeah cough and sneeze and get under it but i think you know the, the under five and a half adjusted <laughs> adjusted win total should be fine i also like the philadelphia eagles to win the division i think you're getting a good price on that i also like the tampa bay buccaneers under seven and a half wins i think you know they they had you know a season where they overperform a lot of people were down on them last year they overperform dave canales has left so i'm going under there i'm also going to go over on the carolina panthers Five and a half wins. Dave Canales is the head coach over there. So I think there's nowhere to go go but up for the Carolina Panthers. So I think they go up. Okay. I like that. Now I want to go back to the AFC North discussion uh, with the, the Ravens and the Bengals. Because you mentioned that early season schedule for the Ravens. And I think that's especially daunting when you mention when you go back to all the players they lost. Like they did bring in some talent to replace those guys, but it's going to take the new pieces a while to gel. Three new starters along the offensive line. And yes, two of those guys are in-house replacements, but like that is still guys who didn't play next to the starters at those respective positions last year on a full-time basis. So that's a lot of turnover for a team that has that really tough schedule. And that's, like you said, the Bengals schedule, a lot better setup for them. Plus 165 are the Bengals. Ravens are plus 145. I could see the Ravens being a team maybe we buy low on mid-season as they get past that schedule and as the newer starters start to gel. But I agree with you that early on, it's going to be a very tough road for them. And they also lost their defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, right. who was right. just, I mean, huge. And I also think, you know, you can go over on Seattle. I think when it was Seattle, yeah. seven and a half, eight and a half. I think you go over on them because, you know, Mike McDonald is, I mean, for, by all accounts, he's a genius. Yeah. And I think Seattle is going to take a step up. I think Baltimore's defense is going to take a step back. Yeah, it'll be fun to see Geno Smith without uh, mm. without the reins on, hopefully, on offense uh, for the Seahawks for this year. All mm. right, Raheem, I'm not attaching odds to this. I just want to hear your Super Bowl prediction for 2024. Not considering betting markets, just straight up, who you got in the Super Bowl this year? All right, I got two. Okay. Okay. Independent of betting odds, you got to go with Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. Of course. Yeah, I mean, sure. they, they play in the AFC West. They're a minus 270 favorite. <laughs> they are the biggest favorite on the board amongst their division. And we all know the easiest path to make it to a Super Bowl is to win your division because how many games you play in your division? You, you play, you know, quite a bit of your season in a division, and that division is weak. So I know they have problems. You know, they, they lost Snead. Maybe have some issues on, on wide receivers, offensive line, defensive line. At the end of the day, as long as you have Patrick Mahomes, you're going to be in the mix. And in that division, I think, you know, obviously it sets them up pretty well. Now, if we're not talking about betting odds, and I like this one anyway, I think you got to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. I listed okay. all the reasons why earlier. Favored in 14 out of 17 games, six easiest schedule this year. I mean, outside of Baltimore, Cincinnati, and Dallas, this team doesn't play any team really projected in the top 10 in the NFL this season. And they get to play the NFC South. <laughs> So um, I think you got to go with those two teams. Those two teams have the best chance of making the Super Bowl, my, in my opinion. So last time we saw the Super Bowl matchup, Jalen Hurts played probably the best big game of his career. Didn't get the win, but played amazing. Did the Eagles get the job done this time, or is it Mahomes yet again? I'm not counting on Mahomes, man. Yeah. Like, I, I, like I, <laughs> you got to understand. So last year, when everybody was out on Mahomes, yeah. after they lost that game against the Raiders, I gave out the Chiefs 10-1 to 1 to win the Super Bowl, yeah. I gave them out to win the AFC, and we got to the window. Like yeah. I just, I, I mean, when it comes down to it, and you know that that Chiefs defense really carried them. But when it came down to it, I know the Chiefs offense struggled for much of the year. When Mahomes had to make plays, he made plays, and right. I don't know. I think I mean at bare minimum, you're talking about a team that makes the AFC championship. Yeah, and like. You knew when that game went to overtime in the Super Bowl that they were going to win because they allow Mahomes to run them. They don't, other than that, because he, they don't want him to get hurt, which I agree with. That's smart. But like when he can use his creative feet and unlock that skill, that offense is unstoppable. So when, when it's crunch time, I think that's why they take a step up is because they allow themselves to utilize their full arsenal. And that full arsenal is pretty lethal, and it led to another Super Bowl for the Chiefs. Okay. I, I think ultimately... 
San Francisco probably lost that Super Bowl by not kicking. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Because I think I think if they kick, I mean, maybe you hold Mahomes to a field goal, you put yourself in in a solid position because yeah. Yeah, and you heard the discussion afterwards about how you didn't know the rules, things like that, and uh, I don't know. It was it was tough. I did have the Niners in that game, unfortunately. So live through all that uh, in in the worst <laughs> possible way. I, the, the crazy thing is, I had the Chiefs futures, and I added more in game. I love it. I love it. I did live bet the Chiefs no team because of the the fourth down stuff, trying to hedge out of the 49ers thing. Because I had Super Bowl futures for the Niners too. I was like, okay, let's claw some back here, and that did help, but it's still pretty painful to watch. All right, that is Raheem Palmer. As mentioned, you can find him on X. I am Rostradamus. You can check him out on The Ringer Wise Guys on Sunday mornings on FanDuel TV and YouTube TV as well. Of course, The Ringer Gambling Show and East Coast Bias as well. Raheem, pleasure having you on for today. Great to talk to you. Good luck to you for this NFL season. Hopefully, we'll talk to you again soon. No doubt. Thanks for having me. Always an honor. I appreciate it. You can find Raheem again on Twitter at I am Ross Thomas. I am on X at Jim Sadas. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Back with you once again next week, and he's set for college football week one. We're going to talk NFL futures once again as well to get you set for what should be a fun run in September. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. 